Good morning. I wanted to share uh, a little reflection this morning. I'm doing it not live, so I can hopefully be a little more concise. Last night, I talked about something that I learned a little more about today. I said how, you know, when we talk about anger as an emotion that God sort of gives us, and it is an emotion, and it does have a purpose in God's plan to correct a wrong or an evil that is present. But there's also a point where we have to move on, and we have to forgive, uh, we have to let things go, uh, or, you know, make a change of approach. And I was reminded about this today when I was listening to a, a new YouTube video, or a new old, a new video, but taken last year from Father Père Michel Rodrigue, and he described in his priesthood, the beginning of his religious order that he founded, he, he could, he said in his English, he's French, you know, but in his English he said um, when his order was founded he could see many things. And I understood that he had sort of a charism where he could see probably the state of people's souls or something to that effect. And there was one priest, I think maybe not in his order, but, well, he wasn't a priest yet, and apparently he was not. In a good place. And so he said he did everything for this priest. He prayed for them, he interceded for them, he talked to them, and uh, was sorry they were a seminarian at the time, and they wanted nothing. In fact, they rejected Father uh, Michel. And he said, after all that, when the man was ordained, he prayed and he saw the Lord showed him a white wall in front of of uh, his order. And the explanation of the Lord was enough. It is now I who will take care of this priest. And I want everyone to hear me because what I understand and I want to share with you about this is it is right for us to be perturbed or upset with how some things are handled. But we need to acknowledge one, there's always another side of the story even if someone is wicked, there's another side of the story that we don't know, and that God knows. Two, we have to acknowledge that we ourselves are fallible, and we should be careful to be chastening someone too much because we may find ourselves in the predicament that we are trying to put them. And three, what we see here is in the end, God takes charge. You are not God, and neither am I. And so, one meaning of the point that we all come to, where we have to forgive and move on, is that uh, God is God and we are not. We may rise up to correct a wrong, and do like Father Michel, pray and fast and do many things, and, you know, nothing seems to happen. I remember the life of St. Teresa of Avila. One time she prayed seriously for a cause in her day. And she was saddened or frustrated that the Lord did not seem to answer. Until one day, the Lord actually asked, uh, well, that's two separate stories, but the Lord responded to Teresa and said, Teresa, I heard your prayer the first day you offered it. The problem is not your prayer. The problem is that men do not want the answer to your prayer. Hear me, brothers and sisters. I, God, have heard your prayer. The problem is not your prayer. It is that men do not want the answer to your prayer. And so it is for us too. We pray and we pour out our hearts to the Lord. But God's will will still happen especially in regards to our free will. He is given free will. And if others in authority exercise their free will to a bad end, will we perhaps suffer for it? Yes. But that's the Christian way, because it is the way of God himself, right? He gave us free will, and what do we do with it? We wasted it, and we used it against him, and we crucified him. Did Jesus stop the middle of the crucifixion, throw off the sadness, and come and strike us down? No. 
at the point of death, he says, Father, forgive them. Why? For they know not what they do. So my brothers and sisters, I want to come to a close here so my reflection is brief. But reflect that we need to stay in the Lord in these days, which means every day and probably more than one time a day to reflect in the Lord. Don't watch too much the news. Please, in the name of Jesus, turn off the news. We have to have some of it because there are things we're being asked to do. But please, don't watch the news all day. All it's going to do is disturb your peace and get you angry about things that you don't need to, because there is that too. We get angry about things we don't need to be angry about. Instead, I implore you in the name of Jesus and of his mother, Mary, that you read the scriptures, that you pray the rosary, and you receive your daily food, right? Yes, you can't receive the Eucharist right now, but you can receive the word of God every day. And God will feed you. My brothers and sisters, may God bless and keep you.